Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're playing Hyperlight Drifter, a game that was kickstarted by the company Heart Machine a few years ago, just now came out. It's kind of like an action-heavy Zelda with that kind of exploration, things like that, but with the graphics, the look, and the feel, and also kind of the sound of Fez, which came out a few years ago. That was that mind-bendy 3D slash 2D platformer that I really liked. Uh, I've really been enjoying this game, and I wanted to share it with you guys, so let's get started. I've already been playing this for a few hours, but I wanted to start back at the beginning for you guys, because I just really like the way they set up the world and how the game works. There's no text, there's no actual human voices, everything is done in pictures, and you kind of just infer what's happening. Which is kind of my favorite form of storytelling, where they don't beat you over the head with it. So, let's get started. Two hours, eleven minutes, it turns out. Let's see, we're gonna be drifting. Let's name him Han. Guess who doesn't love Han? R.I.P. Wonder if I'm gonna get any more out of this having played some, because the first time I watched this I had no idea what was going on. my desktop wallpaper right now. I really like the sound design in this game. Very punchy. So, pretty clear story, huh? I still haven't found why, but every few steps in this game, every once in a while, your guy just starts coughing up blood. Which I've heard is bad for you. I don't have much medical training, but... 
Usually when I keep blood inside the body. Starting out, you have this uh, little dash you call a drift. Actually, while I'm in the game, you can link these together and go much farther and eventually do where you basically do damage to enemies whenever you hit them. So you can drift around the level and actually kind of skid to a stop if you ever stop or just hit a wall really hard, which I usually do more often. And these little health packs from those green things. Yeah, those button prompts at the bottom are pretty much the only text you get in this game. Even when you go meet vendors to get upgrades or items and things like that, uh, you kind of just have to infer what's going on. The platforming, you don't jump, you actually just drift between the platforms, which I really like. It's, it's a cool little idea. These are the green health packs here. Turn this down just a little. I think it's a bit too loud. Okay. As much as I love the sound in this game. A big part of the combat, it moves very quickly when you've got like a dozen guys on screen, is basically just learning tells of enemies and how to avoid them. Really cool looking world, as you can see. Press Y to ping the HUD. If you had said that to someone 20 years ago, they would have looked at you like you're a moron. They just gave me my gun, which right now doesn't do a whole lot. It takes out the same as one sword slash, but fires pretty slowly. Every time you slash an enemy, you get like a stock for your gun back. You get another bullet. It is useful for things like this. fighting like 12 of those guys at once, it's a lot easier just to do three. Slash enemies and objects to charge guns. I really enjoy the environmental storytelling in this. Like they don't, like I said, they don't beat you over the head with, this is what the story is. You just kind of come onto giant machines and creatures like this, and you know something happened that is affecting your character, you just don't know what. direction trumps graphical power every time. You just have a pretty looking game with artistic limitations in terms of how you present it, it can usually end up a lot cooler than just pumping money into it. At least that's my two cents. I feel like I'm playing Stardew Valley again. I just want to stand here for the next 15 minutes, but 
probably boring to you guys. Actually, before that, I'm taking a screenshot. one of those games that I'm going to be excited to finish and then, oh, coughing up blood again. I'm going to be excited to finish and then go back and see what other people thought of it in terms of the story and what's actually going on. reminds me of Shovel Knight a little bit. Another great game. Now I have my map, which actually really confused me at first. It doesn't show you your precise location on the map. It shows you, like, the area that you're in. And so I kept moving around and wondering, why aren't I moving? But it kind of just shows you that you're in that particular quadrant at the time. Uh, from what I can tell, I think it's kind of stru structured like a Zelda game in that you need to go to each of these... If I can zoom back in. Nope. You need to go to each of these sections. So over to the left here, and then the bottom, and then the right, and then the final boss is up on top. I believe, is what it's trying to tell me. Like I said, they only communicate in pictures, and so you'll go to the right or left or bottom, and you'll meet an NPC there who kind of just talks you through pictures. You can kind of figure out what happened, but then they mark certain areas on your map that you have to uh, investigate. So. Um, kind of like little mini dungeons inside of each area. And that was telling me to unlock certain doors. There's like uh, switches in the floor that I have to pull up. This one right here. So that little diamond thing on the left, I'll find those in the world. Once I pull them up, it uh, opens doors, which puts another symbol on the ground back in this main area, which I assume is going to unlock something later. You could only assume. my little warp pad destination so I can go back there whenever I want to. So this is kind of your hub town where you upgrade things. That is a dog. When I complete things it keeps showing it on this map. Ooh. And my controller is vibrating when I stand on this. Interesting. So to interact with NPCs like this, you kind of get their story. So apparently they died fighting some monsters and that pink helmeted dude came in and just saved them both, it looks like. Or robbed them, I can't really tell. So you go in here to basically upgrade weapons go in here to upgrade your, your dash or your drift. I like the little kid playing with a sword because he hits himself in the head. Do it. Do it. You're not doing it. You're just nodding at me. That figures. So this is what an upgrade screen looks like, as you can see. Like I said, no really text there. It just basically... Those Roman numeral 2 things are basically your experience, and once you get enough, you can get techniques like this. And it obviously shows you what they do. But you've got to earn those to 
by these little techniques from that what looks like a mouse person. I think. Maybe it's a cat. I don't know. Lo-fi graphics, y'all. Here's we upgrade your dash. This top one is actually the drifting ability where you can link them together. The most I've ever gotten is 100. I did that this morning. Um, there's someone online who apparently has already done 1,000, which doesn't surprise me, but I still don't know how the heck you do that. Takes very precise button presses. And of course, you can upgrade it to where you do damage when you dash, so... Dash into fools, cause destruction, all that fun stuff. And they just give you a little practice room to work on it. But I don't have the one that links it together yet. And over here, you have the other places to upgrade. Your special abilities, your gun, things like that. Doesn't let me shoot in here. Okay, so what I'll probably do is just go to one of these side areas and show you a little bit about how you explore. This donkey's following me. And then after I do that, I'll go back into my later save game where you can kind of see how far I've gone. So it's basically just open world exploration. Go where you want. Things come out and attack you. As they do. So that's little secret areas, like here you can dash across, maybe, like there, dash straight through, and pick up some experience here. You need four of those little shards to create one of those little energy points. Yeah, a lot of this game is figuring out convenient ways to dash from point to point to either avoid damage or platform or things like that. Those guys are kind of chumps, though. Alright, nothing over here. This side area is actually one of the more complicated ones. As you can see by the map over here. A lot of just independent floating islands over here on the right. Okay, so that's kind of the beginning of the game. Uh, I just thought the beginning was really cool and wanted to show you guys. I'm going to load my actual save so you guys can kind of see how far I've come. I haven't done a whole lot more. I've added two new abilities. The, the drifting and the... I've got like a drift slash thing I can do that takes out enemies instantly. Um, I'm currently in this dungeon, which as you can see is rather elaborate. Uh, a lot of the side areas just have little dungeons you go down into to basically unlock those these little purple markers here that uh, lets you go further in the game. So I'm currently down here in this dungeon. Let's see if I can practice some drifting before those guys kill me. I've already left quite a little trail of bodies here. As you can see, you can run into the wall. But if you time it right, you can just keep going. Running into the wall is kind of fun. But it's also easy to go off the level. Oh crap. I was not prepared for this. I'm gonna heal myself. Yay, experience! Those little fire great things are going to be the death of me. I don't know why that's so much fun, but it is. Okay, I've never been here, so I don't know what I'm coming up on. I assume guys would want to kill me. This is also my 
my little drift slash thing I can do right there. And I think that bar, the bar in the top left, I think it it tells me what abilities I could do at the time because it keeps going down when I use that little drift slash. up here. Maybe I don't have what I need yet to get to the boss. Let's search a little bit. Oh gosh. Those guys explode when you kill them, of course. somewhere. I think there's a secret area over here. Apparently that's it. This game is so pretty. I just felt like doing that. These little drift grates you have to drift past because they'll catch on fire. There was one point earlier in the game where there was like 12 of those in a row and I just had to drift perfectly between all of them or catch on fire. I caught on fire a lot. more often. Okay. Cool. And that takes me back to where I was. I'm going to go check that other area I didn't go to first go up over here. Oh. Don't know if I can go over there yet. purposes of this let's play. I'll let that go for now. Okay. Let's see where this takes me. Probably the boss, after which I will die very quickly. Oh crap. Yeah, I'm gonna die. Dang it. It's hard to avoid. I'd like to at least see what's in that area first, before I quit here. We're already going pretty long, though. Dude blew up on me. 
That's just rude. This is hard without any health packs. Also, not jumping off the side of the level usually helps. So glad you guys don't come here to watch me play games well. I really want to beat this now. It's a point of pride. I don't have much of that. I want to hang on to it while I can. got closer. Alright, three more tries and then I'll stop. I promise. Also, I need to stop slouching. Safe spaces. Two more tries. One more try. I'm not used to the cooldown on that little slash dash thing, and so I end up just waving my sword like an idiot. Oh! Health! I'm coming handy at least. Maybe I can find some more down here real quick. embarrassing myself. Oh, I actually got it. I don't think that should count. I beat it and that one guy blew me up. go see what's past that anyway. Oh, wait. Why are they still there? Oh, crap. Okay. 
to blow me up that time. Sorry, I know I'm supposed to stop, I just really want to see what's behind that door. This guy appears to be skinned alive. That guy's posted up on a spear. Okay. I'm starting to get the feeling that these people aren't too friendly. Given uh, the giant door and the fact that they keep giving me a bunch of health, I'm assuming it's a boss behind this next area, and I'm going to die a horrible, horrible death. Oh, crap. idea what that did. Dang it. Alright, I'm gonna check behind this door. Probably die, then I'll stop. I know I said that a minute ago, but it's kind of the hook of this game. It's You think you're going to stop and there's just a small little thing that kind of piques your interest. It always keeps you going into the next area. Which is just great game design. Keeping us on the hook. That's a boss. Oh, what the crap. Glad I got to him at least. Oh, that was terrifying. That looks like a half frog, half tree, and something I never want to see again. I'm gonna sit down here for a sec. Thank you guys for watching. That's uh, Hyperlight Drifter. I'm gonna keep playing it, hopefully beat it soon, and maybe give you my thoughts in some other form, whether that be writing or another video or something like that. Hope you enjoyed this. Please uh, like and subscribe and all that stuff. Check out my site, BarrierCreative.net, or follow me on Twitter at Ronnie underscore Barrier. Um, or just tell me to stop talking. All three of those are valid options. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.